Hey everyone, so I'd like to talk briefly about some exceptions to the octet rule. So notice that the octet rule is called the octet rule. It's not called the octet law, the octet theory, or the octet principle. And there's a reason why people have carefully chosen the name rule instead of law, theory, or principle. And that's because rules can and often are broken. And the octet rule is no exception to the rule that all rules can be broken. <laughs> anyway, so let's talk about the exceptions. And there are mainly three of them uh, that you need to be um, aware of. Uh, one of them is the concept of odd electron species. So as the name implies, these are molecules that have an odd number of electrons. If you take nitrogen monoxide or nitric oxide, for instance, which has the, uh, the chemical formula NO, one nitrogen, one oxygen. And if you add up the total amount of uh, valence electrons, you're going to find that there are 11 valence electrons, five coming from nitrogen and six coming from oxygen. And so there's simply no way to apply the octet rule here. Um, one of those atoms, no matter how you draw the, the Lewis dot structure, is going to have an odd number of electrons around it. There's no way to get eight for both of them. And this is just one of the exceptions that you need to be aware of. I mean, um, again, nitric oxide, it doesn't follow the octet rule very well, but we know that it exists. So there are species that exist uh, that, do, that do violate the octet rule. Um, another important exception to the octet rule uh, involves the concept of expanded octets. So this is when atoms can have more than eight electrons around them. And this applies basically to every element uh, that is underneath the second period of the periodic table. So the second period, that's where you have your carbon, your nitrogen, your oxygen, your fluorine, and so on. Um, any, anything beneath that, um, basically you're now getting into d orbital territory. So for the first and second rows of the periodic table, you just have s and p orbitals. And then in the third row and beyond, you have d orbitals, and which, mean, which basically just means you have a larger capacity uh, to store electrons in those atoms. So in some cases, uh, those d electrons are low enough in energy that they can participate in chemical bonding, which is exactly what happens in the case of molecules like sulfur hexafluoride. Sulfur hexafluoride has a central sulfur atom with six fluorine atoms bonded to it. So it's got six bonds around it, so each bond is two atoms, so that's 12 electrons around sulfur. So yes, it exists. We know that it exists. In fact, I have a tank of it in my garage and I play with it all the time. It makes my voice uh, really deep. It's fun. I have a video where I prank drive through personnel uh, using this stuff. So it's very <laughs> well known that sulfur hexafluoride exists, and yet it violates the octet rule. The other important exception to the octet rule is the concept of incomplete octets. So if you look at a molecule like borane, BH3, or boron trihydride, I guess is what it would be called systematically, uh, borane is a good example of an incomplete octet. So the boron atom has three single bonds, each to a hydrogen atom, and there's a total of six electrons around that boron atom. So why doesn't borane follow the octet rule? And the answer is that in some cases, I mean, this is a uh, not the best answer in the world, uh, but in some cases, I'll, I'll just try to keep it simple. In some cases, the um, certain atoms in the periodic table, like boron, and I think aluminum is another example, another good example, uh, will tend to form three bonds and leave one of its two, or excuse me, <laughs> one of its three p orbitals empty. And somehow this is energetically favorable. Why it's energetically favorable is probably beyond the scope of this video, but the whole purpose of this video was just to let you know that there are exceptions to the octet rule. Uh, there are plenty of exceptions, and the octet rule is not an all-encompassing law or principle. Um, it can and often is violated by several things. So, all right, that is the end of the video. I hope you've enjoyed it, and I will talk to you soon. All right.